Alrighty, everybody, welcome back. Tonight we're going to talk about fermentation nutrients. Um, since we've already talked about primary and secondary fermentation, I thought it'd be a good time to just dive just a little bit deeper into uh, fermentation nutrients. This is all for primary fermentation, so the conversion of sugar into alcohol, carbon dioxide, and heat is often given off by that. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. And also, since it's our um, last lecture before Halloween, I thought I'd dress up. And I have R2 with me today. Uh, it was uh, very easy to find this online. <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, but I thought I would have a little bit of fun. So anyways, get into some fermentation nutrients. And then you guys can have a good weekend and enjoy your Halloween. All right, cool. So uh, this is just an overview for this lecture. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, so we're going to talk about nutrients, uh, nitrogen being the top focus of this lecture. We we're going to talk about why do we use nutrients and the two roles of nitrogen that it plays in fermentation. We're going to talk about the types of very common nutrients, but not all of them. This is definitely not uh, everything that's out there. It's just the most commonly known and used, uh, which is GoFirm, uh, DAP, which is uh, diammonium phosphate, uh, Fermade K and other types of fermades and also superfood. We're also going to talk about organic versus um, inorganic nitrogen nutrients, YAN, which uh, as you guys might remember from primary fermentation lecture, that's uh, yeast assimilable nitrogen, also known as yeast available nitrogen. And then we're also going to dive into timing of nitrogen additions during fermentation because that's also extremely important to understand as well, especially when you're um, you know working with wine definitely a lot of things can go wrong if you aren't careful about what you're using. Okay, so what is the purpose of using yeast nutrients? Um, yeast nutrients uh, help to ensure that wine yeast produce a complete and rapid fermentation. So these are just, um, you can imagine, like, basically think of this whole lecture as you're running a marathon and, you know, you're going to need to drink water, you're going to need protein to, um, to get through it, you know, obviously to train. But um, this is kind of like the marathon for yeast. Like, what do they need to be successful and to reach that finish line before they get too stressed from all of the alcohol that, um, that you know, they basically pass out before they can get to that finish line at the end of the fermentation. So that helps. That, if, it, if that analogy helps you, you can stick with it. Um, but that's just kind of a way to think about what we're talking about today and why it's so important, okay? So nutrients are also wonderful because they prevent a stuck fermentation, okay? It's very important that those yeast complete the fermentation. Otherwise, it, it puts you in a very bad position and your wine could spoil. Uh, it provides yeast the optimal nutrients for optimal performance. Uh, this can be controversial for some winemakers that are non-interventionists. Uh, that means they don't like to add many things to the wine, if anything at all because they want the wine to be um, the purest expression of itself. They like, to, like for it to complete on its own, um, use native yeast, etc. go from there. Um, ultimately, it's up to the winemaker whether or not they decide to utilize yeast uh, nutrients or not, but we're going to learn about it today because it's very commonly used, and it can be very confusing about what to use and when and its purpose, okay? So, uh, like I have in the little box right here, when we talk about uh, yeast nutrients, I want you to think about rate of fermentation. Okay, it's definitely going to affect that. It's going to affect the growth of the yeast, and it's also going to affect the completeness of your fermentation. Okay, those are, the, those are the top three big ones I want you to think about. Okay, so diving into the roles of nitrogen. Now, this slide has a star on it so it's very important okay so keep note of this I'm gonna ask you will most definitely ask you this on an exam so the two roles uh, represents an important nutritional factor function in protein synthesis and sugar transport so I know it's kind of that's kind of a big one so basically it is the building blocks for for proteins okay protein synthesis how proteins are created they need nitrogen and that's extremely important because we need these proteins to transport sugar into the cell and to transport out ethanol, carbon dioxide, and it also produces heat in that process as well, okay? Also, with the nitrogen additions that we're going to make to our wine, they're also really beneficial because they help 
create um, quality markers in wine. So essential for biosynthesis of wine quality markers. And these are higher alcohols, thiols, and esters. And we're going to talk about that in the next three slides. Okay, so protein synthesis for sugar transport, number one. Number two, biosynthesis of quality markers in wine. Okay, definitely write that down and remember that. Okay, higher alcohols. Uh, definition of a higher alcohol is any alcohol with more than two carbons. Okay, so ethanol is two carbons. There's methanol with one carbon, there's ethanol, and then you can go up the scale, propanol, and et cetera from there. But anyways, more than two carbons on the chain. That's, that's the definition. Here's ethanol right here. It's one carbon, this black little uh, atom, and it's the second one right here. Okay, that's ethanol. Uh, so this is a... Higher alcohols are a fundamental aroma found in brandy. Um, they can add positive aromas to wine. Some do not. It's formed by yeast in complex metabolism with amino acids and sugars. So the amount of fusel alcohols produced is dependent on the temperature of the fermentation, the pH of the must, the species and strain of the yeast that you use, and the nutrients available. It's the big one, nutrients available. Okay, so if we have those nutrients available, it's more likely to create... Uh, these higher quality um, aromas in the wine, okay? So uh, an example of this is isoamyl. This is a higher alcohol. It is one of the most common ones found in wine, and it smells like bananas. So if you ever have, a, you know, like a Chardonnay or another kind of white wine um, with banana in it, you're smelling isoamyl in that. So that is for your information. Okay. Uh, thiols and esters, uh, these are other high quality aroma compounds that are found in wine. So an example of esters would be, you know, white flowers, banana, raspberry, strawberry, apple. Okay, those are all ester compounds in that class. Terpenes, we have rose, uh, lychee or lychee, depending on where you come from. Lavender, orange oil. Thiols, we have grapefruit, so think of that, um, Sauvignon, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc with the grapefruit aroma and taste. Those are, it's a thiol. That's the class of compounds that this is uh, pertaining to. Passion fruit, black currant, and gooseberry. Uh, pyrazine. You talk about pyrazines. You typically talk about green, uh, earthy things. So like bell pepper, grass, elderflower, and peas. So I would definitely um, try to memorize one or two from each of these each of these classes because that would be a very good test question. So uh, put a mark on that slide. Okay, so this is kind of just um, reinforcing what I said a little bit earlier. So nitrogen is, is the main component that we are concerned about for yeast with yeast nutrients. And the reason for that is because nitrogen builds proteins. And proteins are the ones that deal with the synthesis of the sugar conversion to alcohol. So if you don't have healthy uh, or strong like proteins and those cell walls then you're, it's not going to perform very well so that's why we're extremely concerned with that. Um, this also helps to ensure that yeast adapt to high alcohol tolerance and survive through the end of the fermentation. So that's extremely important. Okay, there's lots of different types of fermentation nutrients. Uh, so go firm, very common, uh, DAP, diammonium phosphate, Fermate K, Fermate O, Fermate A, there's lots of different types of Fermates. They all have different uh, purposes, uh, di specific things that they contribute to the wine, uh, superfood, and many more. Like I said, there's lots of nutrients available out there. These are just some of the uh, most common that you'll hear winemakers talk about, okay? It's really important to understand what you're putting in your wine. Uh, you, It's extremely important that no matter what you decide to use, you understand how to use it, how much to put in, and when to use it. Because if you are not using this correctly, it could open the floodgates for spoilage, okay? It's like it's like leaving food out and, and a bunch of stray dogs coming to it. When there are nutrients available in the wine, you need to always remember if something will utilize it, whether it's the stuff you want to utilize it or something you don't. So that's it's why this is extremely important, okay? Um, yeah, like I said, when do I add it? How do I add it? What do they do? What are they for? Okay, so that's basically the the whole point behind this um, behind this lecture. Okay, so firstly, the most important thing that we use that provides nitrogen is GoFirm. 
Go firm is comprised completely of yeast holes. Holes are dead yeast cells. Okay, so um, you know they've already broken apart. They're not active. You can't reactivate them and use them in a fermentation. But basically, the yeast that you're adding to your wine, or even the native yeast in the must, will utilize this almost like Lego building blocks. Okay, it takes pieces from it. And it, and it attaches it onto itself, and it basically becomes like, you think of it as like a transformer super yeast, okay? Just taking parts and utilizing it for itself. This is also, um, so when you use this, you don't add this directly to the must. You typically, you get some some warm water, you um, add the GoFirm first, so it, it provides this really, um, you know, not hard solution. Um, it's, it's kind of, the water's conditioned, it's ready for the yeast. And then you add the yeast within that same bucket or that same container, you know, whatever you're using to mix it up. Then the yeast starts to activate and then you pour that all into your tank. So it's, like I said, it's using the building blocks. It's, it's providing a very healthy conditioned environment for, for when you activate the yeast that you bought, the very expensive yeast. Um, so yeah, that's extremely important. So that's very, very common. Go firm. Okay, DAP. So this would typically be the next type of nutrient that you add to your uh, to your fermentation. So this is uh, diammonium phosphate. It turns out it's a very common and multi-purpose salt. It's a fertilizer and soil additive. It's used in cheese cultures, controls dyes and wool, etc. The list goes on and on. This also provides nitrogen to yeast in a fermentation. It can help prevent the stuck fermentation. And it, and it can help prevent unwanted characteristics and boost flavors and aromatics. The downfall of this is that it can um, increase the risk of volatile acidity, so that um, you know acetic acid, vinegar smell, um, creating um, microbial instability by adding nutrients to the wine. Um, some believe that the fermentation is too hearty and that it mutes aromatics and flavors. Okay. So um, if you'd like to read more about that, there's more on DAP from Wine Spectator. They're a very good, credible source. Um, and like I said, when you work in this industry, you're going to hear the pros and cons to everything. And some winemakers and owners are extremely, extremely opinionated. And they'll say, never use this, never use that. It's extremely important that you do your own research, that you um, respect uh, their opinion and their practices. And that's okay. Um but there isn't really uh, a wrong answer for a lot of these things. You I mean you can add it at the wrong time and use it the wrong way. But um, like I said, it's extremely important in this area, in this field of science, that you stay open-minded, that uh, you respect other people's opinions, and that you do your own research and you form your own opinions on things. Okay, because winemakers come in all different backgrounds and shapes and sizes and preferences and it's very easy to become closed-minded and opinionated. So I can't stress that enough in this, uh, in this field. Okay, timing of addition for DAP, um, you would typically add it after the lag phase of fermentation. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in the next slide. We're talking about the different phases of fermentation. This is extremely important because DAP is an ammonia, ammonia type salt. So salt is extremely toxic to yeast in high concentration. So it's really important that you've already added your yeast and mixed the tank and the yeast is dispersed before you just pour in all of this um, salt, basically, into your tank. Okay, so direct addition to your yeast will most definitely kill it. Okay, the definition of lag phase. So um, when you add your yeast, it typically takes one or two days for it to completely activate and um, start um, reproducing. So it starts binary fission. You get cell division is the first stage. And so um, this is just a chart showing you, you know, here on the x-axis we have time. So this is something that happens over time. And on the y-axis we have basically um, viable cell concentration. So this is the amount of active and live cells of yeast in that fermentation. Okay, so first you add the yeast, and it's, they're just waking up, they're activating, they're stretching, they're getting out of bed, but then they're reproducing like crazy. Okay, so once they start reproducing and doing cell division, then you'll see an exponential growth, which the growth phase. 
when it cell divides and then you'll see um you know cell individual cell growth from there but then there's a death phase so this is kind of just an overview of what happens during fermentation to each um population okay so you'd want to add dap um, as soon as the cells start um to st start to divide at an accelerated rate okay so here's the growth curve. Here's the official growth curve. Now that I've introduced it to you guys just a little bit. Uh, so like again, this is over time. Here on the x-axis and the y, we have a, a logarithm number of bacteria or yeast. You know, it applies to both. So in here we have a better explanation of what happens in each stage. And, you, and this is what happens during fermentation. Okay, this happens through every fermentation. There's a lag phase. Uh, little to no population growth. Uh, population doesn't increase. Bacteria or yeast um, acclimate to the new environment. And we're getting um, intense metabolic activity. So uh, so growth in size. Excuse me, I had it backwards uh, just a second ago. Then we have the log phase or exponential growth phase. Uh, period of most rapid growth. Cells are more susceptible to adverse environmental factors. Okay, don't worry about what's down here because this is not applicable to our class. Okay, stationary phase. This is when it levels out. So the cell growth is rate is equal to the cell death rate. Um, stability. Slow microbial growth influenced by um, limited nutrients, uh, low oxygen, um, accumulation of toxic waste is happening. And then we have the death phase, which um, cell death exceeds cell growth, okay? So your numbers are dropping, your population. So this has a star on it, so definitely be able to draw this on an exam and be able to uh, label the four different stages and probably be able to provide a very small abbreviated explanation of what's going on in your fermentation at each phase okay and it's also really important that you can label your axes okay so time and then you could just say uh, yeast or bacteria population there you go you guys got it okay fermade so we're going to go into the different fermades fermade k uh, specifically provides um, unsaturated fatty acids and sterols to give yeast important survival factors for alcohol resistance and permease activity so the fatty acids and the sterols are contributing to, um, you know, the cell wall as well, okay, or the cell membrane. So this membrane fluidity is very similar to the concept of why we care about the proteins, okay? So fluidity meaning that um, nutrients and, you know, the um, what's being created can easily transport in and out of that cell. So that, that's what we're talking about with fluidity. This is... What we're talking about here is it helps cells to cope with stress. So you think about fluidity, you think about flexibility, okay? If the more flexible the yeast is, the better that it can handle a stressful environment, okay? That's just, just kind of the best way to think about that, okay? There's lots of articles on this, um, so just, just think about that, okay? It's, and these, they call these things survival factors, so... It's pretty straightforward. It means you're going to have a higher survival factor. If, if you use survival factors, you will have a higher chance of surviving through that entire fermentation. And we want that. We want the yeast to complete the entire fermentation. And I have a little bit of, um, I have an article here if you guys would like to read about that. Um, this stuff also provides a nucleation site to help key, keep yeast in suspension. So oftentimes the yeast will float to the bottom of the tank or fall to the bottom of the tank, excuse me. Um, nucleation just means um, a physical site for the, the yeast to attach to or the yeast to rest on. So that way it's still suspended within the fluid of the fermenting must and, and not on the bottom of the tank, basically. Okay, Fermade A, it's another Fermade product. Um, this is a blend, okay, so it contains different things in it. It has um, inactivated yeast, so I uh, like yeast holes. Um, alpha amino nitrogens, this is organic yeast assimilable nitrogen. And then we also have the inorganic with the salt, the DAP. 
Uh, this So this is kind of tries to be a well-balanced overall, uh, just kind of gives you everything possible that you could need for your fermentation. So this is uh, provided to encourage a more balanced rate of fermentation. You don't want your, because once you add nutrients, your fermentation can speed up because you're providing because you're providing nutrients to the yeast, you know, giving it what it needs to be more efficient. Um, also, it's formulated to deliver more yan per gram added to the must than DAP and Fermade K. This is all according to Scott Labs. If you'd like to look more into their products, I do have a link. Um, they are a wonderful resource for fermentation science. Okay, Fermade O. O stands for organic. So this is a yeast nutrient with a high content of organic nitrogen, so it's mostly uh, amino acids. It's formulated without DAP, of course, because that is inorganic salt. Uh, for this, it's recommended to add into two doses, half at the end of lag phase and half, the other half around one quarter and one third um, sugar depletion. So there's, the reason for that is to have a more balanced rate of fermentation. If you add, you know, nutrients, you have to be strategic, you have to know your fermentation and the rate that it's going. You have to add nutrients at the right time to give it a little pick-me-up, you know, either to kick it to the end um, so that way it completes the race or just to get it going in the beginning as well. Okay, so it just depends what you're working with. Like I said, make sure you know what you're working with and what your fermentation needs. Uh, superfood is also um, advertised as a complete yeast nutrient. Uh, it's less expensive. Uh, this contains yeast holes, uh, sterols, and survival factors, okay? Uh, yeast extracts, amino acids, uh, vitamins, and minerals, and it's also certified kosher. So this uh, is not uncommon when you are shopping for nutrients to see, um, you know, certified organic or certified kosher because um, I'm pretty sure Fermaid K is uh, certified kosher as well. Let's say, excuse me. <clears throat> yep, certified kosher, boom. That's why they call it Fermaid K, because it's uh, Fermaid Kosher. Um, because for, for some people, uh, it's extremely important for them to be able to advertise on their label um, that they are kosher or they are organic. So it, the products that they use have to be certified for that as well. So that, that's why you see that, okay? Um, so that way you can say that. And then the customers that that's important to, um, they have that product for them. Okay, going into the last topic here, um, the differences between organic and inorganic nitrogen sources uh, as far as yeast nutrients go. Um, organic nitrogen sources are the most efficient and complete nutrient for complete fermentation and developing full aromatic potential of the grape. So um, ultimately, Organic is best. I mean, you're working with organic products, uh, so it definitely makes sense that they would utilize that much better um, than a salt or anything else. Um, so examples of organic sources that we had ta just talked about is uh, Fermate O and then um, ingredients derived from the actual yeast. So, um, you know, holes, uh, proteins, peptides, tripeptides, free alpha amino acids, anything that have those things is going to be very good for your fermentation. Um, inorganic nitrogen sources are, would be Imodium salt, so DAP and uh, DAS, DAS. Uh, definitely uh, read this article. It kind of, if you had a hard time with how I uh, presented this lecture, which is totally okay, I will not be offended because we all learn differently and the way my brain works might not be the way that your brain works, please read this article because that's where a lot of this information came from. For this lecture so it will um, actually help you retain the information better okay so this one from uh, Lalamond wine right here definitely take a look at that okay and if you're interested about yeast assimilable nitrogen I have a link right here from Wikipedia as well so um, help yourself okay uh, Yan we talked about this before yeast available or assimilable nitrogen um, so this is the nitrogen that yeast can utilize to create healthy cell walls and develop aromas. Uh, there is nitrogen that occurs naturally in uh, the must. That's ammonium, amino acids like proline, arginine, and glutamate, uh, peptides, and proteins. Um, the yan concentrations in must naturally vary uh, anywhere between 60 to 500 parts per million or milligrams per liter. 
depending on uh, the, the grape variety and also the soil content of the vineyard. Okay, so, so what we're basically saying is the amount of nitrogen that your fermentation will need, that it requires, depends on what it is lacking as a variety or from the vineyards coming from. If you're it's coming from a vineyard that has low nitrogen in the soils, you're definitely going to need to add more to help it get through that fermentation. So this is something that we typically measure uh, so we know where we're starting at and what we need. So keep that in mind. Timing of additions. Uh, this is from a very uh, valuable source I found online. This this is their words exactly. If you'd like to read it, I basically have it summarized in the next slide. So I'm just going to go over that. <laughs> you can read that if you'd like to. Uh, it's there. So this is this is the sum summarization I got from that, okay? If you are going to add nutrients and you're not quite sure when to add it, the best addition hands down, just overall, no matter what you're using, is one-third of the way through fermentation, okay? So this is when the yeast population has reached its maximum size and they start to need nitrogen for protein synthesis. So they're, they're done dividing for the most part. It's at the max population size and now they're like, hey, we're going to start uh, synthesizing proteins and developing healthy, strong cell walls. So that's that's when it's going to need those that nutrient or that food to create that and make that happen. Uh, a single addition of nitrogen at the very beginning of your fermentation is definitely not recommended. And this is different from GoFirm because GoFirm is basically a rehydrating agent. So um, count that out. But if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna do the GoFirm with your yeast, then add it, then add ne add nutrients right away. Um, it's not it's not going to be good for your wine and this is why um, it creates a very high yeast population uh, it in, which can be good but you're kind of stressing them out you're you're increasing this initial speed of fermentation it releases a whole lot of heat because of all of that activity that the yeast are doing uh, very high nitrogen depletion at the very beginning of your fermentation so it doesn't leave any nitrogen for converting sugar to ethanol later. Okay, so you're basically creating a lot of yeast cells that are weak, and that's not what you want. So uh, qu quality, in this case, is gonna be much better than quantity of yeast. Okay, so that if you have a smaller population of yeast that are very strong and very high quality that will take you through the end of the fermentation that is much more important than just, um, you know, hitting hitting your, your fermentation with a bunch with a lot more but yeek weak yeast excuse me so the the timing of your nitrogen addition can give you lots of yeast cells that have um, strong survival rates so basically think about you know back to the marathon uh, example if you, you you know you're gonna need water for your marathon you know you're gonna need um, you know your protein or your snack at some point if you just if you drink three liters of water, and eat all your snacks in the beginning, you're just going to be sick. I and mean, you might feel good for the, for the first third of it, but at some point, you know, you're going to have to pee or you're going to, um, you know, you're not, you didn't save any food for later, so you're going to be exhausted and hangry at the end. So that, so think of it that way with the yeast too. You need to save it at, for specific parts or points to help lead it and push it through the fermentation. Okay, it's, it's not like it, knows to hang on to something and save it for later. If it's there, it'll utilize it at that moment or as soon as it can, basically. Okay, and then we have some review questions. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel, please feel free to reach out. Um, like I said, definitely focus on the slides that have the stars on them. Um, be open-minded about what how you feel about fermentation nutrients and how people might approach it in the industry uh, be respectful of course and uh yeah i hope you guys have a good weekend very excited for halloween uh, hopefully you get to um be safe and have some fun and i'll be looking forward to seeing you guys next time all right thanks guys